We are here on the very busy and very noisy Konami show, uh, show floor. Um, we're here with Peter. Peter, you're presenting with us a fighting game called Skullgirls. Can you sort of talk a little bit about it? So Skullgirls is obviously a new 2D fighting game. Uh, the lead designer is Mike Z, uh, who's known in the fighting game community. He's a tournament fighter. Basically, he kind of wanted to take Marvel vs. Capcom 2 as sort of the base and fix it instead of so it's not an online broken mess. Um, so, for example, we have an anti-infinite combo system so that uh, if you try to loop a combo, the other player will be able to break out of it. So the, game, the characters will actually play as they're intended instead of just devolving into a three-hit combo that you read online and just having that ruin the game. Um, we have really awesome 2D art. The game has the most frames of animation per character of any fighting game. It's all very high resolution, entirely drawn by hand by professional animators. Um, Gameplay, even though it's a 2D game, it actually is a real-time 3D engine. So we actually have real-time lighting on the characters, and uh, they light up when they get hit or by lights in the environment and stuff like that. Um, and so far, it's just it's really it's a blast to play. Uh, the characters seem pretty balanced so far, and you know that's our goal is basically to make the ultimate competitive fighter. I tell you, that's a really ballsy move, especially with the whole Marvel vs. Capcom statement you just made. How, how do you feel going up against that market? I mean, obviously, uh, the animation style, like you said, the 2D artwork is absolutely fantastical. Um, how, how do you feel against such the, the rest of the heavy hitters out there? I mean, to some extent, I mean, we're just trying to make the best game we can. And, you know, we think that if it's fun and that it's good that it will establish itself. We're not really worrying too much about you know, what other people think. But I mean, like, when we take it, we took it to Evo a couple weeks ago, for example. Everybody had a blast playing it. You know, people who play Street Fighter love it because they can pick one character. People that play Marvel love it because they can pick three different characters on a team. Um, and people that even like Tekken and Blaze Blue seem to like it too because they're kind of little bits and hints of it in there as well. I sort of like a trial by fire then to do that, but you came out relatively unscathed. Yeah. Well, what's. What, what's the process? That what's the release date? What's the formats? What, where should people be able to find this? Uh, it's actually going to be released on PSN and XBLA. It's a downloadable game. We're going to have a, it's because it's a smaller game and it's a downloadable. We're going to launch with around eight characters, but obviously because it's downloadable, it's going to have a lower price point than you're used to seeing for fighting games. Um, and also because of that, all of our it's, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom two, three, for example, has 36 characters, about seven of which are actually usable. Um, all the rest are just for assists and everything. By focusing on a smaller number of characters, we hope that they're all going to be very deep and viable characters. Uh, that's our goal, not to just have a bunch of clone characters. Um, and it'll be out later this year. Well, what, what's the sort of background on the characters themselves? Obviously, people want, have got their favorites, people want a nice hook on uh, the, the fighters that they will be using. What, what's the background with these guys? So, kind of the backstory of the game is that there's an artifact called the Skull Heart that will grant a wish to a young woman once every seven years. And basically, if their heart isn't pure, though, they'll be twisted into a uh, monstrous character or enemy called the Skull Girl, who terrorizes the, land, the countryside. You know, and the entire world basically has to go kill the Skull Girl that she's going to destroy the world. So what you have here is uh, the characters are all, at launch, they're all going to be women. We'll have DLC males in the future. Um, who are all trying to get the Skull Heart, make wishes. Um, but they all have different backgrounds. Philia, uh, she's just a schoolgirl. She's an amnesiac. She has a parasite attached to her head, which is kind of a shape-shifting mop of hair that she attacks with. Uh, Parasol, who's the new character we're showing today, um, she's the princess of the kingdom and also the commander of their army. And uh, Cerebella, she's a grappler. She's a circus, but also a secret leg breaker for the mafia. So we have all these different factions vying for the skull heart, all with different you know aims for it. Uh, you said it's an all, all female cast then with uh, DLC male characters. Did, did the story dictate that or was this a, any other reason for that? It was really just basically the budget we had and the story. Uh, the first eight characters are largely dictated by the, the first arc of the story and then the males come in a little bit later to it. So it's the plan then, obviously not uh, DLC male characters, it's the plan to extend the life of this um, with more DLC packs further down the year or so? Uh, 
I don't know if we have a finalized plan yet, but yeah, we want to, I mean, we will make characters as long as it makes sense for us to.